Hello everyone, today's game is between Maurice Ashley with the white pieces and Sunil Weirmantri, also known as Hikaru Nakamura's stepdad with the black pieces. This game took place in the World Open in Philadelphia in 1998. Maurice Ashley was right on the cusp of his GM title uh, at the time. It was rated about 2500 and uh, Sunil Weirmantri is a long time master, rated 2240 with the black pieces. So enjoy this game. The reason why I'm showing this particular game is because if anyone has any information about the ending of this game or the story behind it, uh, I would like you to put that in the comment section. So here we go. So the game started off E4 from Ashley, D6, so pick defense from uh, Weirmantri, D4. G6, so now we have a modern defense transposition, knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3 for Maurice, c6, queen d2, and now we have this early expansion on the queen side from black, of course to discourage uh, queen side castling, as well as gaining space over there on that side of the board, a6, knight ce2, knight d7, so in classical Paul Morphy style, um, Maurice is going to place his F pawn on F3 and his C pawn on C3, just solidifying uh, his center against any um, black uh, counterattack. This is a bit slow, but it often gives white a long term uh, positional uh, advantage, as it's very hard for uh, black to really uh, destroy the white center. So F3, Queen C7, the knight goes to H3, and notice how the knight uses the fact that this um, knight on d7 is blocking the bishop on c8 so that the white doesn't have to worry about getting his pawn structure uh, fractured after say bishop takes h3 and this knight is on its way to f2 c5 c3 bolstering the center e5 castles knight df6 knight f2 Knight e7, and you can see right here already white has, uh, you know, an advantage because black's uh, strategy here in, the, in the hype, this hyper modern system is to uh, try to break down and destroy um, white center. And uh, black's uh, white center is very well uh, fortified here. And the problem that usually occurs in these type of positions uh, occurs on the D file. Um, the D6 square usually becomes very weak here. As you can see with this uh, uh, backwards pawn. So white has a small advantage but nevertheless an advantage. Right? He has nice control in the center. He has the two bishops. And he has opportunity to attack the d6 square. Now here Maurice played a4 which is common. Alright. Attacking on the, uh, the queen side here. However, the more straightforward attack is uh, d takes e5. And after d takes e5. Just simply drop the bishop back to c2. And um, this is kind of uh, taking advantage of black's lack of development. Bishop e6. And then just immediately taking over the d file before white, excuse me, before black gets the castle and set up his pieces on the d file. Castles, queen d6. And that's just the basic idea, right? Simple but very powerful. Just um, basically opening up the position before black gets uh, really a chance to settle down. Knight df3, for instance, attacking the, um, both the c pawn and the e pawn. Knight d7, rook d1, and this is how typical uh, play can go. Again, um, black has, uh, excuse me, white has taken over uh, the d file, and you know it's a game ahead, but white uh, has a slight edge here. Maurice chose a different way to play a4 against Wimitry. Nakamura's dad played rook b8 here. And this just gave um, Maurice the file. Okay, so now he's the open a file. He plays b4. And now c4 from uh, Wimitry. Bishop c2. And um, I didn't really like that continuation from black because now he doesn't really have any counterplay on the queen side. 
Everything's locked up and Maurice has the uh, A file. Black castles. And now Black just starts attacking on the other side of the board. F4. Knight D7. Uh, little, little bit too slow for me. I like just taking right here. E takes, and let's say if knight takes, just continuing on with the the counter attack. Knight C6, and let's say for example knight E2, and rook E8. And just putting pressure, putting more pressure on the white center, exposing, exposing it to uh, the attack of the pieces. Here he played knight d7, strong pointing on uh, e5, but then Maurice just opened up the f file here. So f takes, d takes, and now just knight g4. And we can see now the attack building up for Maurice here. Sunil played f6. And now, here, I think Maurice was a little hasty here. And I think here is a good time to just close up the center in his in his favor by just playing d5. He's basically got what he wanted once out of the center. I think d5 is a, is a good move here. Not only is he creating a pass pawn, but he also has the threat of just simply playing d6. This forces pretty much the queen to have to blockade at this point and then black excuse me then white can just continue his attack with knight knight h uh, knight g3 and let's say you know just make some kind of move here bishop b7 and then you can start jumping in maybe knight h6 check of course, you can attack this pawn with rook a5, but I think this is a better continuation for white to begin with d5. So he played bishop h6, and this allowed Sunil to now pin this pawn. So the king moves, and now queen e6 was played. Maurice played h3, protecting the knight. Bishop b7. And now. Exchange was made. Bishop takes. King takes. And queen h6 again. d5. Um, is a good move also. King h8. Rook a5. Attacking the pawn. As mentioned before. And now here. Uh, Sunil. Plays a risky move here. Bishop takes. Uh, e4 and the idea is to follow up with f5 forking the um, forking the bishop and knight um, perhaps better here was just f5 right away and that could be meant by knight takes e5 knight takes e5 d takes queen takes and knight d4 bishop takes e4 and black has you know a respectable looking game Okay, so he plays bishop takes e4, Maurice plays bishop takes e4, and now after f5, black is in uh, serious trouble here, so knight takes, f takes, and now Maurice plays knight f4 here. Which is a good move, attacking the queen, but even stronger is rook takes f8. Okay, and the idea is if rook takes, then knight f4 here. All right, hitting hitting the queen, and then if uh, of course if queen g8, then you just simply play knight takes d7 here, winning a whole piece. And if knight takes um, f8 here, then just simply rook takes b5, 
Okay, exploiting this the back rank situation. So rook takes b5. Queen f8 check. And then you have this nice uh epaulette mate right here after knight g8. Uh knight f7. Well it's not mate, but black has to give up his queen to stop to stop the mate. So Maurice played knight f4. And Exchange was given up by Hakaru's dad. Rook takes f4, knight f5, hitting the queen. And now Maurice gives back the exchange. And after queen takes a5, Maurice played rook a5. Again, more powerful knight g4 here. this position okay and one of the ideas is to come to e3 again make sure this pawn cannot make any progress down the uh, down the e-file very important right to combine to combine the defense and attack um, all of um, uh, Ashley's pieces are better okay so it's kind of, and he has a nice pass pawn so Again, with the coordination of the queen on h8, excuse me, on h6, and the knight on e3, he can block this uh, pawn. His rook is is um, putting good pressure on the b5 pawn, and he can just gradually improve his position without rushing. See him here, he was eager to attack. He plays rook a7. I mean, it's hard to knock that move because there's a double attack on this knight right here. And of course, if the knight moves, then this mate right here on h7. All right, and who knows what the time situation might have been. Good move here in G5. And not only does add extra protection here, but let's say if Rook takes D7 there, then Queen F1 just simply allows Black to draw by perpetual. So Queen F1. King h2 and queen f4 over and over again. And now you can see why this move g5 is so powerful. It blocks off the action of the queen down the c1 to h6 diagonal. And this is what allows black to get away with that situation. And that's why um, <clears throat> that's why Ashley was not able to capture the... Um, uh, cap capture the, the uh, knight here on d7. So instead, he played the move queen takes g5, all right, which again allows it, it it allows black off the hook. Now, king g1, all right, deals with with the threat of just queen f1. All right, it seems counterintuitive. Again, you're trying to attack, but now you have to slow down and make a prophylactic move. I think that's one of the hardest things to do in chess because, you know, you're programmed to gain the initiative and to keep the initiative, you want to try to keep making um, these, you know, so-called attacking moves or moves that seem to be forcing the opponent in one direction or the other. So it takes a lot of uh, judgment and experience to, you know, to have the initiative, but then be able to put the brakes on and make a prophylactic move or a defensive move right that I think is one of the hardest skills to uh, develop in chess and here is a perfect example after this move g5 I already showed you the idea of the perpetual if King g1 is made white not only improves his piece right which is the king the king is his worst place piece on the board so he improves his piece Right, brings his king closer to the center, right? So in the potential end game, he'll be able to come and stop this pawn, right? One square closer. Also, also he's able to stop this this I not only is he able to stop this idea of perpetual, he gets the king closer, all right, without uh, ruining the coordination of his other pieces, and he still maintains this threat here, all right. So after king g1, all black can do now is go for e3, which reinstates the threat. So, for example, knight d knight takes d7, 
queen f2 and you have the same perpetual idea I'll just show you queen f2 and now well of course if queen h1 then just um, queen f1 but he goes here check and same same thing right black's not black's not able to win there but he can uh, just draw so e3 for example and so Ashley could try this move knight takes g6 I mean knight g6 check queen takes queen takes and then try to go into this ending here this ending is a uh, better better for white however black has chances here to you know with this activity of his rook to be able to probably draw in my opinion again this is just a sample line but this is a murky line that of course if you're black you know you're in that much trouble you'll take your chances and you see how you have the two um two pawns against one this is probably this is probably a draw okay like I said, I'm not going to put it in, you know, Nalimov, table base or whatever, but just instinctually it looks like it would probably be a draw. Like I can't see with co correct play, you know, um, white winning that. So with that said, I still think King G1 is the, is the best option here for uh, white. Here, Maurice played queen takes g5, and the idea, of course, is if queen takes g5, then knight f7 check, just winning. There's a famous uh, game, uh, I forget which game it is, but it's um, uh, Petrosian uh, Spassky in the World Championship 1969. It was a similar position where uh, Petrosian sacrifices his queen, or pseudo sacrifices it, the same position. Um, Spassky's king is in the corner, and there's like a check here, and then he picks up the queen, and you know. He wins. He wins the game. So that's what that just uh, popped into my mind when I saw this uh, position here. So this is the idea, though. If uh, queen takes g5, then knight takes knight f7 check, and then picking up the uh, king, and then just totally uh, winning at this point. However, Sunil played queen f1, king h2, and now the counterattack is on from black. Rook g8, queen d2. And after this move, queen d2, which protects the um protects protects the g2 pawn, uh the tables actually turn for black here. The proper move for white at this point was to play rook a1. Right? And then after rook takes g5, rook takes f1. Knight takes, d takes. Rook takes with similar prospects, and then the king can come out of his hiding. King g3, say rook g5, king f4, trade pawns, rook takes two, uh, rook takes g2, king takes e4, and so on. You can play rook f3 here, for example, or you can get more aggressive. This is my, more of, in my style. I'll play something like that, but um, again, it's prob you know probably uh, you know a draw. However, Maurice played the natural you know move queen d two, um, and now Sunil uh, <clears throat> started pushing this pass pawn. Okay, pass pawn is awesome for deflection, right? As they move up the board, pass pawns get very, very powerful. And of course, now Maurice in a situation where he cannot capture this pawn because of the mate. What to do? He plays queen c2. e2. Now what? Mate is threatened. And there's a queen coming. No knight f7. Desperation. Sunil at this point played the move Queen takes F7, which is which is the weaker of the moves. Yes, he gets the gets the piece, but he loses his queen. King G7. 
King G7 is the move right here. Okay, now there's no mate here. Okay, because the king is blocking the uh, the rook down the G file. So I can see why uh, he wanted to, you know, keep the uh, G file open. After King G7, black must play a defense. Uh, excuse me, white must play a defense like Rook A1. Again, distracting the um, the queen away. Okay, so for instance, Rook takes A1. Queen takes A1. And black, black is just winning this game. King G7, Rook A1. Excuse me, King G7, another possible defense. Yeah, there is no other real other. I mean, queen takes e2. That's not a defense. Okay. Um. So, however, Sunil in the game played knight f7. Excuse me. Um. Maurice Ashley played knight f7 check. Sunil left the defense of this pawn and played queen takes f7, taking the piece. Maurice played queen takes e2. And uh, you know, Sunil still winning, still a piece up. It's just more difficult. Queen f4 check, and again. I'm thinking these guys were in some kind of time uh, scramble here. King h1, knight f6 from Sunil. So he's just coming in for, for the attack. Rook b7. He plays knight d5 with the threat on uh, c3. Even more powerful again is knight e4. Bringing the knight further up the board instead of being here. is further up the board and fulfilling the same duties. But you still have other ideas with the knight. Instead, knight d5 was played. King g1. Knight knight c3 is playable or e3. However, Sunil played queen c1 check. That's why, again, I think he was in tri time trouble here. King h2. And they probably didn't have de a delay. Queen f4. Because he's just going back and forth with the checks instead of just simply uh, winning the game. King g1. And now he plays knight c3. Again, knight. Uh, I like knight e3 here because of the attack on the g2 pawn. Devastating. He played knight takes c3. Queen e7. So it's like a desper desper desperado shot by uh, Maurice to... You know, checkmate. And as I always say, uh, tactics from bad positions hardly ever work. Because if the tactics worked, then you wouldn't be in, in a worse position in the first place. So, usually tactics from bad positions backfire. But, um, again, what else are you going to do? So, Maurice played queen e7 check. Uh, excuse me, queen e7 to try to mate. Um, uh, Carl's dad simply just played queen takes d4 check. So, the king has to move in here. Uh, my friends, the game ended, uh, and it shows that Maurice Ashley won the game. So I'm assuming that he won in a time, in some type of time scramble. All right, but if anyone um, knows, you know, the story behind this game, it's from the Philadelphia World Open uh, in January of 1998. Uh, you know, please uh, tell me again. Maurice Ashley has the white pieces, and Sunil Wirmantri, um Hikaru Nakamura's stepdad. Had the black pieces, and uh, he definitely played a brilliant game. He's winning in this uh, end uh, position. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes made in the game from both sides, but um, again, Sunil was just a master rated 2240 with the black pieces, although he's a very strong player. I mean, I've played Sunil uh, before. Actually, I had the black pieces. <laughs> I played the black pieces uh Against him, I played the Latvian counter gambit. Maybe I have to dig that game up. If, if I can find it, I'll show you guys that game. I remember I prepared and studied for this game. And, I mean, every line in the Latvian counter gambit. I knew it like the back of my hand. And um, I played this guy, man. Uh, I played Sunil. And he played a novelty. Like, a move I never considered or saw. And I was just down a pawn. Just a clean pawn, and I could not, I could not believe it. And uh, I played, I played my tail off that game, but uh, he he wanted to beat me, beat me uh, in the end. But um, Sunil is a very strong player. But um, yeah, if anybody knows the story behind this this game, uh, or if, if, even if Maurice Ashley sees this game or, or Sunil, I know you guys are doing big things. But 
you know, take a take some time and check out check out my channel, and uh, you know, let me know what happened here. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, to all you out there, please uh, continue to like, subscribe, support the channel, uh, donate, please, in the links below, and also check there for uh, DVDs and or uh, books related to the opening that was presented on the board today, which was the Modern Defense. And I will see you guys on the next video.